What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to get the most difficult thing sorted when it comes to recording, editing, etc. And that's multi-track audio in OBS Studio or any other kind of software. If you've ever edited gameplay footage or streamed to Twitch, etc., it's a super powerful thing to have your Discord audio, Spotify, game sound, and the rest split up so you can have more fine control over what people are hearing, whether it's recordings or live streams, etc. In my previous videos, I've showed you how to set up multi-track audio with OBS Studio which is super powerful, but of course you need multiple inputs and outputs. So that's exactly what I'll be showing you in this video, a super powerful piece of software that lets you get all of that done. And it's not virtual audio cable, voice meter, or anything like that. Even though those are valuable things that you can use, this one's just a little bit easier, but it does have a few upsides and downsides. In my previous video, I was sponsored to cover Steel Series Moments. However, this one, there was no sponsorship or anything involved. I just found the Sonar section, gave it a shot, and it's actually actually a pretty cool, really powerful piece of software that I'd recommend you check out, or at least see what it does in this video. Let's get into it. Of course, if you haven't got SteelSeries GG installed, you'll find a link down below where you can simply grab it using the free download link and open up the installer when it's done downloading. Now, of course, this isn't the only option when it comes to free software, but everything that you learn here will carry across to pretty much all other bits of software that allow you to have multiple inputs and outputs using just one microphone and one set of headphones. All right, so installation. We'll simply click through this and wait for it to install. Once it's done, we'll finish here and the software will open up. At this point, you can skip the sign in if you don't want to sign in with an account. So I'll skip it, continue anyway. And here we'll head across to the Sonar section, but it seems like we do need an account to get this done, sadly. So I'll just log in here. All right, so there we go. I've signed in. I'll start setup. And now you may lose audio as it's setting up multiple different audio inputs and outputs. So keep that in mind. You can pause this video or check it on a different device if for some reason things stop working. Anyways, in here, we'll continue through the selection by telling us what output we want it to use for our game audio. This can be speakers, headphones, etc. I'll be selecting my headphone output here, so I'll set game output. Then we can choose where we want our chat audio to go to, so that's Discord. I'll also choose my headphones here. Then for media and aux, which is Spotify and the rest of the things, set your media and auxiliary outputs. Again, this will probably be your headphones or speakers. We'll set outputs and Finally, we'll choose a microphone input. I'll choose analog one two, which is my normal microphone, and we'll then click game on as we're done here. At this point, you now have a bunch of different audio inputs and outputs set up. If you check your Windows settings followed by playback, you'll see your normal audio inputs and outputs, as well as a couple of brand new options. So aux, gaming media, chat, and microphone, as well as stream at the very bottom. Essentially, all of these different virtual audio devices all output to the same headphones or whatever you have selected in this section over here. Then on the recording section, you'll notice a few new devices being the microphone and stream audio here which of course, as you can see, is my normal microphone going through the software here. All right, let's get into the thick of it. If you're gonna be using something like, let's say OBS Studio, like I am, you can head into settings, followed by audio, and set your new audio devices here. So for my desktop audio, I'll choose gaming and let's say medium. Microphone, I'll choose the sonar microphone, and that's pretty much it. At this point, we can leave it as is or add them separately in the audio mixer by using specific outputs here. So audio input capture, audio output capture. And when you have everything split out, like I do here, your desktop audio, maybe Discord and the rest, and your microphone over here, you can have more fine control over it by adjusting the different volumes of each of these, or of course, clicking the cogwheels here and choosing which output tracks you send everything to. Now I've gone through this in way more depth in my OBS setup guide, which this won't be a carbon copy of, but essentially track one, should be everything, so your microphone, your gaming audio, your music, etc. that's sent out to Twitch as your main audio stream. Then if you're gonna be recording and splitting things up later, you can have your microphone, gaming audio, and other things like that split up so you can have more fine control over them in Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or whatever you're using. That's essentially my setup here, and that's what I've done. At this point, you're pretty much done. In whatever software you're gonna be using for audio, you can go ahead and choose different audio outputs. So for example, in Discord, I can head across to voice and video and tell it to use my SteelSeries microphone and the output device will be my Sonar chat device, which essentially gets sent to my headphones anyway. But you'll see that when we choose this, all audio that comes from Discord will be sent into the chat section here. You can even see that Discord has popped up as an application here. 
So at this point, everything is split up. And even though we have one physical output, we now have two, three, four, I think that's four, four different audio outputs that we can use and have more fine control over in our stream, finished recording files, etc. That's pretty much the gist of it. However, this program does get quite a bit more in depth and it's definitely powerful to have even if you're not a streamer or content creator. If we head across to game, for example, you can tell it to use a specific configuration for a specific EQ profile, but for now, I'll just leave it as is. What you'll notice here is that you get an equalizer that you can play around with. You can add more bass and they give you different sections here to tell you exactly what you're messing around with. It's super simple. You can adjust what you want to hear, more bass, less mids or something like that, and you can fine tune it to your liking. You can even have different presets. So you fire up Apex and bam, it's got this configuration here that I think cuts off a lot of sub bass and muddiness and maybe boosts footsteps and things like that, which are super useful to have. This could even be considered cheating in some games. There's a bunch of different ways that you can EQ your headphones to boost footsteps and things like that in Call of Duty, Apex and other competitive games. And if you have the ability to, it's definitely super powerful. Then scrolling down, you can also set up spatial audio for a 3D sounding setup that I think just uses a fancy model that makes things sound more 3D, but it's not actually going to be more 3D. You got your volume boost to make it louder if necessary and smart volume over here that'll automatically duck the audio or make it louder to stay within a specific range. This already is super powerful. We have the same options for chat. So once again, you can choose to boost your audio, give your Discord chat or whatever it is, more sound effects like sending them through a walkie talkie or adding more bass, etc. But one of the powerful options here is if you have a noisy friend who doesn't use crisp or whatever it is in whatever software, you can actually use AI noise cancellation yourself to clean up the audio that comes out of discord remove noisy background fans and things like that this is powerful in itself and a great tool to have even if you're not a content creator then noise reduction obviously the same thing just a different processor noise gate so it shuts off completely when it's below a certain volume and finally a compressor so loud sounds and soft sounds are sort of the same volume this is super good media once again we have very similar options you can eq your sound so spotify you can give it more bass etc scrolling down spatial audio volume boost it's the same as the game tab finally aux should be pretty much the same once again it's just these super simple options finally your microphone here very similar to the chat tab we have an equalizer as well as noise cancellation a gate and a compressor so if you don't want to set up these things in obs or you're streaming using something that's not got such fine control over your audio you can actually set it up here and in whatever program you select your microphone in it'll have all of these different effects on it pretty much by default this is great for a consistent sounding microphone over all of your different software for recording, streaming, chat, etc. And that's pretty much it. Once you set this up, you're practically done. You can adjust what outputs are going to want later on by simply dragging them from one block to another. And assuming you haven't set it up in that program to specifically use one output and one output only, you can move the sound between different audio devices. So let's say I unmute my browser here. You'll see that I have it in the game tab, but I can just drag it across to media. And now I'll have different control over this, different equalizers, etc. Any changes that we make here will be made in OBS Studio and things like that. Obviously, less output volume here means that it'll be quieter in OBS, for example. So you can push this entire thing across to a different tab and have more fine control over your audio there. And with that, we're practically done. When we move things around here, and assuming you have OBS Studio set up so that you have different audio tracks, and in your settings, output, recording, you're actually saving these other tracks. You've now successfully set up multi-track audio and you have full control over it. Now, of course, you can use things like Voice Meter Banana and other programs like that to get similar outputs that all go to your actual headphones. But as I was playing around with the SteelSeries software anyway, this popped up and it's actually really powerful. Just a quick note, there was one issue that I ran into when I was using the software pretty much as a daily driver to test it out and play around with it, is that sometimes you won't have any audio output at all from certain applications. If, for example, your browser isn't making any noise, drag it to a different output and drag it back and audio should then be restored. In Windows, when you're using software to specifically control the outputs and inputs of certain programs, sometimes it gets a little bit wonky, and this is just one of the downsides that comes with doing that kind of thing. But anyways, it's powerful software, and if you're looking for something like this, it's a great option to 
used. Once again, this video was not sponsored in any way. I was previously sponsored to cover the moments section of the software, which you'll find a guide linked down below. The only reason I'm showing this is that it's actually super powerful. I'd probably be using it myself if I didn't already have different audio outputs all going to the same headphones added by my physical audio DAC or mixer. So anyways, hopefully you found this video super useful. It's actually really powerful to have, but of course there are many different pieces of software that you can use. This is just one of them and the general tips that you collected from this, you can use in practically any of them. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.